Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I am a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Uh, joining me here today is Paul, who is from Red Hat, and he is a managed OpenShift Black Belt service member. Paul, say hi and give us a very brief description of your role at Red Hat. Hi, yeah, my name is Paul Tchaikovsky. I focus on helping our customers with cloud services, uh, specifically in this case, Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or ROSA. Now, ROSA is managed OpenShift, so it, it's, it's everyday normal OpenShift, but there is a SRE team managing it for the customer. Yep. Typically, when we deploy ROSA, it caters for ingress from a customer perspective to the API, the control plane, your application workloads. What if I had a customer who wanted to use something like a customer domain name or wanted right. to facilitate something like a, uh, a security or a caching layer in front of that? How would they go about facilitating the integration with other AWS services? Got it. So let's draw up a couple of AWS services. So we will do, uh, we'll do AWS CloudFront and AWS WAF. Okay, so right. CloudFront being uh, our CDN, sort of caching service, anything that's uh, hit from CloudFront gets cached there, so customers get a performance benefit exactly. for those objects that can be cached. WAF being a, you know, a typical web application firewall, so really mm -hmm. just adding an additional layer of security that's right. over and above what they're getting from OpenShift in itself. Exactly. All right. Um, these services, you deploy them into AWS, but they're going to require a different set of load balances and a different set of naming conventions. How do you create a custom domain? Is there anything we need to add to the OpenShift cluster, cluster to facilitate that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So we have a uh, aptly name custom domain operator right here. And so you feed it a few things. That's an add-on into OpenShift. So that's, assuming that's, from within OpenShift, you're just going into add-ons, select the operator. So it's actually part of uh, ROSA itself. So you don't have to add this in, it's, just, it's in there by default. Oh, okay, great. Right. And what do we need to pass it? I'm assuming at the very least some certificates and a scope of sorts. Yeah, exactly. There's three things. You have a, a wildcard DNS. So we'll just show that. And you usually configure that in, you know, Route 53. You have a TLS certificate that secures that uh, wildcard DNS. Uh, and then you do have a scope. So you have a scope um, which can either be internal or external. Because we're exposing this to the internet, you would do uh, external. And, and that, I'm assuming that's going to generate another load balance. Exactly. In the background. So this is part of OpenShift's integration with AWS. You don't have to manually create the load balances. The OpenShift API machine sets installers in the background, they'll right. create those objects for you. Yep. And, and then these certificates and things are already added to that AWS elastic load balancer. You don't have to manually import them. Exactly. Okay. Right. So now what we need to do is we need to wire everything together. So this here will have a host name, right? And so in CloudFront here, you use that host name as the destination endpoint. As right? if you had a CloudFront origin over here and you have to fill in all of those it, elements. Exactly. Of it. There's a few things. You have to make sure you pass host headers through a few other things to make sure that, that the DNS name that you're going to use to access your apps is sort of preserved the whole way through. And then you also tell CloudFront that it wants to use AWS WAF. So this is interesting because there's multiple layers of security here. I'm assuming here that the end connections or customers are not going to go directly to the load balancer. They're going to be forced to go through these different layers. They'll only be able to talk to WAF. WAF will only be able to hit CloudFront. And only CloudFront will be able to interact with that load balancer as, as degrees of separation. That's right. Okay. That's right. So you take the TLS certificate you provided here, and you also provide it to uh, CloudFront, and you use the Amazon Certificate Manager to do that. Okay, so we've got we've got Amazon Certificate Manager or ACM here, not to be confused with uh, Red Hat's Advanced Cluster Manager, and we are adding that as a TLS endpoint. There. Right. 
So now that that has that, we can start actually wiring things together. And so we have in... You did mention Route 53 as well exactly. for the DNS records. So I think it makes sense to add in so we add a, that. a Route 53 hosted zone. There's technically two hosted zones here. There's the hosted zone that ROSA creates itself when you provision ROSA. Right. This is the customer's own company domain. Correct. We're talking about a custom domain here. Right. And um, we've got the AWS uh, certificate manager potentially coming into the picture here, but I don't think customers are strictly needing to use AWS as certificate manager. They've got options here. That's right. They can create certificates using whatever certificate system they like to use. They so, just need to make sure they put it in here and then also here, and you put it in here by adding it to ACM. Okay, so this could be Amazon Certificate Manager. They could use their own sort of public key infrastructure if they've got something like a Microsoft Active Directory right, exactly. um, certificate-driven platform. Um, Let's third Encrypt. Party, Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is one I use a lot just because it's really easy to do and you still get the like secure public um, certificates. Uh, one thing with ACM to note, you are needing to export the public and private certificate for import exactly. to this operator. So ACM tends to work better for external or public facing implementations, exactly. private environments, you, you're more likely going to see a yeah, Let's Encrypt or a yeah. PKI. That's right. um, what is the flow for a end user going through all of this to get into their application workload inside OpenShift? Right, so let's let's just kind of show that. So you have your end user here who is the splitting, spitting image of you, Thank uh, you. and they'll try to access something via their web browser. So it'll make a, a request to DNS, and that DNS has a C name pointing to the CloudFront. So they'll then send their traffic over to CloudFront. CloudFront knows to send it to WAF, so it will send it to WAF. Uh, the AWS WAF will inspect it, and if everything is okay, it will then send it back, and then CloudFront will send it down to the ELB down here. And this is now where it's starting to hit your ROSA cluster itself. That's a whole new ingress controller inside OpenShift. So this, That's right. this AWS load balance is forwarding to a router layer inside OpenShift itself, and Correct. that in turn is forwarding to the, the actual part right. of the workload. So in the cluster, you'll have a, um, like a, a service, and that service will route for a set of pods that are set up for your application. Essentially, that's building a bridge between the the networking inside AWS, the VPC itself, and the SDN, the software defined network internally in OpenShift. That's correct? exactly right. Yes. Okay. Um, do we need to facilitate any sort of return here? It's essentially the same path. Anything that's accessed there goes here, gets cached in CloudFront, and then. If a customer had to request the same information again, they would just feed from that cache. Exactly. So the next request, if it's the same, is just that. Yeah. So we get a performance break here, we get mm -hmm. additional security, and we are stitching together a lot of the benefits of AWS with uh, OpenShift. The, we're talking about ROSA here, so this is mm -hmm. managed OpenShift. Is this significantly different from other OpenShift implementations, such as self-managed OCP, for argument's sake? It's, it's roughly the same. You don't get the custom domain operator in a self-managed OpenShift, so you would create an ingress controller directly. But because OpenShift wants, because Rosa wants to help you uh, have a have your uptime, have your resilience, the uh, the OpenShift, the Rosa tooling manages the ingress f b via the custom domain operator, just so that then the SRE and the automation services can keep that ingress healthy. Okay, so same building blocks, just a little bit more of a manual exactly. process to get there. Right. Uh, it, it's not changing the requirements of what needs to be put That's into right. it. That's right. From an SRE perspective, uh, none of this really touches the SREs managing it because they're not accessing the applications. Exactly. They're, they're, they're still coming in and hitting the API endpoint of that cluster for their day two operational aspects, their monitoring, all of those break fix elements. Exactly, that that's right. Uh, Paul, thank you very much for this. Uh, as always, it is great having you here, and thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot.